Lethal Weapon 3 was released in 1992 and it sees the old gang being reunited. Pretty much everyone from the previous film seems to be back in this, or the ones that weren't killed, that is. Uh, yeah, we get Joe Pesci back, but we do get some great new additions. First off, though, the story basically centres around this ex-cop, played by Stuart Wilson, who is trafficking arms in order to set up or build a housing project, which he can then sell, obviously, and earn a legitimate living. It's all a bit convoluted and doesn't make a right lot of sense, especially once he's been found out, which he kind of realises because they, they know who they're after. So how he expects to maintain that operation once he's found out, I don't know. It's, it's safe to say, story-wise, plotting-wise, this film isn't quite on par with the first two. Um, now, I can only assume that that is down to the fact that Shane Black had no involvement on this one. He did do the story for the second one, and Jeffrey Boehm did the script, and I thought that kind of pairing worked very well. It gave us what I think is the best film in the franchise. However, we just have Jeffrey Boehm here on script duty, along with Robert Mark Kamen. Basically anyone who is aware of that name will will know that he is the guy who writes all the crappy kind of Luke Besson action films. The Taken series, the Transporter series. You know, this, this isn't a guy who's particularly devoted to delivering us the, the most intricate plot lines. Uh, he's, he's all about getting the action on screen. On one level, that kind of serves the film well, because it gives Richard Donner a, a chance to, to deliver some really great kick-ass action scenes, which, you know, we've come to expect from the Lethal Weapon franchise. We want that, that's why we come. But we also want that to be matched up with, with, with character and story. Now, I do think we get a lot of the character stuff here, but it just doesn't feel quite as involving as the previous two films. It feels like the character moments in this are almost separate from the plot. Like, you could take things out and you wouldn't miss it, but it's there to give us a laugh. It's there to endear us to these characters that, quite frankly, we're already endeared to. There are some nice touches, like, Part of the plot sees uh, uh, Murtaugh gunning down this, this kid that he knows, and I like how they deal with that. I like that they have Murtaugh meeting with, with the, the parents of this lad, and, and the mother gives him a slap. Um, that, that adds a bit of weight to the story, uh, which is basically about gun culture, about gun crime. And uh, I, I remember this being a bit of a hot topic back when this film came out. I mean, it does resurface all the time as a hot topic, but I specifically remember it back then. Um, so that th that is the film's attempt to deal with something that is quite pressing at the time. Riggs and Murtaugh, you know, Mel Gibson, Danny Glover, and obviously uh, Joe Pesci, again, they're all back on fine form. They, they, they do what they do, and they do it well, you know? It, it, they're very comfortable in these roles now. But for me, the great addition to this film is Rene Russo. Her character is really kick-ass, a really strong woman, um, both mentally uh, and physically. She, she, she gives a, a really mean uh, roundhouse kick, um, and I believe her in the actions. It helps, obviously, that Rene Russo is playing her. She's a very good, very underrated actress. For anyone who, who wants to see something she's been in, that they, if they've not seen a lot she's done, check out Nightcrawler, because she's fantastic in that. I feel like Stuart Wilson is good as the bad guy, but I don't really feel like he gets much to work with. I don't think he gets any great kind of chance to shine. You don't feel that there's a particularly great personal connection between him and our hero. Whereas in the first two films, obviously we, we had Joshua in the first one who had a similar history, a uh, similar military history to Riggs. So the two of them kind of felt this competitive streak against one another. Uh, and we as audience members felt that too. And then in the second film, obviously we've got the man who, who basically made uh, Riggs the crazy person he is by killing his wife. So there was a very personal connection there. The only thing we get here is the fact that he's an ex-cop, you know? So it's don't, yeah, don't don't betray your own kind of thing, mentality about it. That, that's about as personal a connection as it gets. But Stuart Wilson in the role, like I say, is fine. There are some moments of humour in this that feel very, very broad. There's this uh, police woman who's kind of got this thing 
a murtar and she comes at one point with flowers and and yeah she's very loud very duh you know just like in your face kind of over the top um some of the moments we, we could do without, I think we could have lost them and, and be quite happy. Um, and we also get the psychiatrist as well. Now, this character, to be honest, she was getting a bit stale in the second film. She's not really someone I felt they needed to bring back in the second film. So the fact that they brought her back again for a second time in the third film, yeah, I, I don't need this character now. She, she can be gone. There's nothing against the actress. I just think... They're pulling back characters for the sake of familiarity, for, for the sake of, hey, here's someone who was in previous films. It doesn't really work for the story. It's that, that shtick is getting a bit old. Um, although it was a nice touch to see the, the bomb disposal guy in the, in the toilets. Uh, at one point, Riggs goes into the toilets with René Rousseau's character, and, and he's just there, and it's like, yeah, if you've not seen the second film for a long time before seeing this one, you probably wouldn't realise. But yeah, it's the same guy from the second one, so it's not a nice little cameo. But beyond that, yeah, it's an entertaining film, but I do feel it's a big step down from the other two. Um, and I think that's primarily because of the lack of involvement from Shane Black. I give this a three and a half out of five. Like I say, still a very entertaining action film. But there you go. That's my thoughts on Lethal Weapon 3. If you've seen it, I want to know what you thought. Comment below, let me know. And until next time, thanks for watching.